All right, welcome back to The Effect. We are still talking about difference in differences. And in particular, we're going to talk about the sort of big assumption that you really got to make for difference in differences to work. Uh, and this is an assumption that's really annoying because uh, you can't actually check it. Uh, and you always just got to wonder, hey, you know, I'm, I'm basing all my study on this one assumption. Is it true? And that assumption is parallel trends. So what is parallel trends? Well, you can define it specifically in a bunch of different ways, but the basic idea is this. Remember in the last video we talked about what difference and difference was? We look at the treated group and we compare their before to their after, that's the first difference. And we think, okay, well, that, what does that difference represent? What changed over time? Well, the treatment went into effect. That's one thing. So we see the effect of treatment, but we also see whatever just change would have occurred anyway because of the passage of time. Things are changing over time naturally, even if no particular treatment goes into effect. And we don't want to confuse uh, just things that would have happened anyway with the effect of treatment. So we then look over here at the control group and say, well, they changed over time too. And I'm going to assume uh, that the change over time that I saw for the control group is the change over time that I would have seen for the treated group if they had not gotten treated. I'm sort of assuming that both of these groups would have changed over time in the same way, which allows me to say, hey, whatever change I see over here for the control group, I'm going to subtract that out for the treated group, and that's going to leave me with just the treatment effect. And hit parallel trends is what I hid in there when I was describing that. I'm going to assume that the, that the change over time that I see for the control group is the change over time that I would have seen for the treatment group. At its core, that's what parallel trends is, because that is the thing that we are doing when we do difference and differences, is subtracting out the change that we saw over here from the change over here. And if that doesn't work, if the change that we would have seen in the control group would have been different than the treated group, then that whole thing doesn't work anymore. It falls apart and parallel trends does not hold. If you want to define parallel trends a little bit more specifically, uh, what you are assuming is that the gap between the two, between the treated and control groups, would have stayed the same from before to after if the treatment had not occurred. So it's okay that the treated and control groups are different in some way, but the amount by which they are different should have stayed the same from before to after. So that is the assumption that we need to make. We need to assume that if the treatment had not occurred, uh, the relative difference between the two groups would have stayed the same. Now, what are some ways in which this might not be true? What might make parallel trends fail? Uh, well, there are a lot of different things that could happen. It could just be that things were just naturally going to trend together or apart over time. Like, let's say, for example, we you know, want to know the effect of some policy that the United States implemented. Um, and uh, it implemented at a particular time. And we think, well, what can we use as a control? Well, I don't know, let's use China. And we want to know the effect of this policy. Maybe it's a new tax policy on economic growth. Well, China has been growing much faster than the United States already. So we would expect that China would grow more than the United States, even if the policy hadn't changed, just because that's what's been going on in the world for the past couple of decades. Uh, and so we would expect parallel trends to fail in that instance, simply because we would expect the gap between the two to get closer as China grows faster than the United States, uh, regardless of whatever policy change happened in the United States. So that's one way in which parallel trends could fail. Could also be that uh, we are not just looking at one event. Uh, so I gave the example in the last video of let's say that a school puts on a uh, teacher training reform program. And we think, okay, well, hey, uh, this teacher training pro reform program happened over here, didn't happen over here. Um, but what if they put a different policy into place over here? What if they, you know, gave everybody free school lunches over here in the control group? Well, then something would have changed over time for them probably too. Uh, and we can't really tell the difference between the policy that happened over here and the policy that happened over here. These people didn't get a free lunch. And so we would have expected that uh, we are seeing, we're not just seeing the changes over time over here. We're seeing the effect of changes over time and the effect of a free lunch. So we can't just use that as a comparison group. So there are a number of different ways in which parallel trends could fail. How can you set up your study in such a way that make parallel trends as believable as possible, as likely to hold as you can hope? Well, there are a couple of different things that you can do. Uh, one is just to know your context really, really well. Uh, you should be pretty certain before you do your difference and differences that that control group, there's nothing else really changing at the same time that the treatment goes into effect, right? You want to check and make sure, hey, did that comparison school district, did they put on a free lunch program at the same time that this school put on their teacher training reform program? You want to be able to say no to that, right? That nothing really changed at the same time. Uh, so just knowing your context really well is important for that. Another good thing that you can do to try to make your parallel trends assumption more plausible is just to pick some groups that are pretty comparable and similar overall, such that it's not that un unrealistic to say that they probably would have evolved in the same way. Uh, now, it's not actually a requirement of difference and differences that the two groups be very, very similar. Because uh, again, it's okay if there's some baseline differences, as long as the gap between them stays the same. Uh, so it's not a requirement, but it, it's, it's more plausible and believable to say that two groups that are very, very similar to each other 
would likely have evolved in the same way over time uh, in the absence of some treatment. So that's another way that you can make things more believable is picking some comparison groups that are pretty similar to the group that got treated. And in fact, if you wanna get advanced about it, there are certain ways you can use things like matching procedures to try to do this in a more effective way. Picking groups that are comparable and did not get treated uh, that look very similar. Lastly, you can check what's called prior trends. This is something I'll talk a bit more about in another video, uh, but basically uh, we need it to be the case that the gap between the two groups stays the same from before to after. Uh, now we can't actually observe that. That's sort of the difficult thing about parallel trends is that you can't see what would have happened to the, to the treated group if it hadn't gotten treated. So we can't actually check whether this is true or not. But what we can do is we can look at other pre-treatment periods. Let's say I have a number of different periods that are pre-treatment. So let's say I'm looking at that uh, teacher reform program. Let's say that it went into effect in 2012. And I've got data on these two different schools from 2005 to 2011. What can I do? Well, I can look at their math scores over time. And I can say, hey, you know, it looks like before the treatment happened, these two schools looked like they were sort of heading in the same direction, right? Maybe test scores were improving at both of these schools, but it, they were improving at roughly the same rate. That is a a pretty plausible indication that they probably would have continued to increase at the same rate from before treatment to after. It's not a guarantee. You could still have something like the free lunch program going into effect over here, but if you don't think that's what's going on, then a look at the prior trends can give you a pretty good sense that, yeah, maybe I believe uh, that these two trends would have continued in the same way. We can see some example data here on what looks like prior trends being tested. Uh, so here I have an event going into place at a particular time period. I have a treated and control group, uh, and I'm looking at the pre-treatment rate data, so only the data to the left of that dashed line. Uh, so in one case, on the left side, you can see what looks like parallel prior trends. Both groups are increasing over time, uh, but it looks like before the dashed line, the rates of increase are pretty similar for both the treated and controlled groups. They seem to be going up at the same rate, and they end uh, at that last period before treatment at roughly the same gap that they had at the very first period that we're looking at. This is a case of prior trends being equal, which gives us a decent hint that they probably would have continued to trend in the same way and continued to be equal in the post-treatment period. On the right-hand side, however, we have what looks like converging prior trends. If you look at the data, the data just to the left of that dashed line is very, very close together and had been getting closer together over time compared to the very start of the time period where they were quite far apart. So as time went on, they got closer and closer together. It looked like that control group was trending up more quickly than the treated group. So we might expect that in the post-treatment period, the control group would have continued to trend up more rapidly. Uh, and so we can't just say that that is the the time difference that we would have seen in the treated group because we already saw the control group was trending up more quickly. Its time effect was bigger and more positive than the treated group's time effect was. And so we wouldn't expect those to be the same. We can't just subtract one thing out of the other and expect it to work. So that is parallel trends. We can't see it, but we need to be able to say that it is plausible in our context. And it's the real difficult thing about doing difference in differences. We need it to be the case uh, that the time effect that we estimate using our control group is the exact same time effect that we would, would have seen in the treated group if the treatment had not actually occurred. We need to be pretty confident that that is a reasonable subtraction that we can make. We can say that this is the same as this, Otherwise, none of this is going to work. There are a couple things we can do to try to make that more plausible. Uh, we can check and make sure that nothing else seems to be changing at the same time. Uh, we can make sure that our control group is pretty similar to our treated group in many ways. And we can also check the prior trends to see if trends were converging or diverging or staying roughly the same before the treatment actually went into place. And we'll talk a bit more in the future about how to check that. All right, thank you. <laughs>